Arm balance transitions are an incredible way of finding flight and fun into your practice. There are countless of arm balancing transitions, but for today's class, we are going to be focused on Titibhasana, Firefly Pose, to Ekapada Kudanyasana 2, the Flying Splits Pose. Now, this transition might seem a little bit more intimidating than it actually is, but there is a way to make this transition very available for your body. Before attempting this walkthrough, please make sure that you are warmed up, particularly your wrist extensors and your hips. We're going to be doing a couple of drills just to get our inner thighs and our outer hips ready for this transition. So to get into Titi Basana, I like to do a lot of fun walk-ups up and back to the mat by doing these lizard lunge fly-ups. So from Malasana, from this passive squat at the very back of the mat, drive your knees wide. And what we're going to do is we're going to plant our hands directly in front of us. And as our hands plant, move your left foot closer towards you just for balance. You're going to kick this right knee up high towards your tricep until you kick that right foot to move past your hands. Do this several times, moving the hands forward until you find your extended low lunge or your lizard lunge. From here, shift forward and back. Now option to drive your inner right thighs in towards your right arm and float your arms behind you. From here, straighten out the right leg and bend that right leg. Really getting into the inner thighs, the adductors. And then plant your hands down. Because we walked forward, we're going to walk our way back. So right knee to right tricep, step it back. Move the hands back to travel with that right foot. As that right foot moves back, move that left foot back into your malasana. Time to move on to that left leg. Take an inhale here. On your exhale, plant the hands down. Move that right foot into that lunge position. That's going to help drive your left knee to left tricep. Step that left foot forward. Move the hands up, left knee to left tricep. Move that left foot forward. One last time, just like that. In that low runner's lizard lunge. From here, you have an option to tuck your left arm underneath that left leg like airplanes, and then straighten that left leg and bend it. Plant your hands down. We're going to move back now, backwards, into that malasana. Awesome work. Another really fun way of getting into Titibhasana and Ekapada Kudanyasana too is this drill that I call the crow walk-ups. And how that's going to work is we're going to come into a modified crow by squeezing our inner thighs to the outside of our triceps. So I come here, squeeze my inner thighs to the tricep, land the feet further away from the hands. Plant the hands down, squeeze inner thighs, walk the feet up. One last time, just like that, walk the feet up. Find a wide leg forward fold, shifting forward, side to side. Now we have to get back. So to get back, you could squeeze your inner thighs towards each other, kick your heels up, land them back with control. Or if you want to test out your titi basana or your shoulder press, plant your hands back, sit your butt down, press your inner thighs towards your triceps, look up, point your toes, float the legs. Move back, plant your hands, squeeze your inner thighs through your triceps, point the feet, look up, float the legs. Awesome work, back into that malasana. Awesome, awesome job, everyone. That's hard work, but it's going to get you in a really nice position to find that 
arm balancing transition, especially if you are exploring a lot of titibasanas, ekapada kundinyasana twos, or any of the arm balance variations. So, if you have blocks, this is a nice way to use the blocks into your practice as well because the blocks are going to bring the ground closer to your body. And I'm going to demo this first on to the blocks, and then I'm going to remove the blocks out of the picture. So to come into, we're going to start with the right leg being the mover. So I want you to plant your hands to the very top edge of the block, right? So it's your wrists on top, and your fingers are kind of going to be dangling towards the top of that block. Press your inner thighs towards your shoulders. Squeeze them in. Sit your butt back. Look up. Find your titi basana. From here, you're going to lean over to the right shoulder until you bend that left leg, then straighten that left leg behind you. This is all about the twists of that right body. And then slowly, Come out of it, shake out the wrist. Now that ability to twist your body to the side is going to help give you space for that back leg to move into Ekapada Kudanyasana 2. I'm going to demo this this time on the left leg. So from Titi Basana, Look up, straighten the legs. I'm going to lean over to the left side, twist, then reach that right leg back. Keep reaching out through the feet, and then lower with control. I'm going to set the blocks off to the side, just to demo this movement to you without the blocks. So coming into Titi Basana, you could even rest your wrists in Padagustasana by placing the wrists underneath. Coming into our Titi Basana, and feel free to snuggle in the wrists underneath your feet to Padagustasana just to release your wrists. This is a lot on the wrist extensors. But I'm going to demo this first with the right leg. So I plant my hands back, I squeeze my inner thighs towards my triceps, I sit my butt low, I gaze up, I point out through the feet, I puff up through the back of my heart, then I'm going to lean over to the right until I could shoot that left leg behind. Point out through the feet, and then slowly come out of it. See, it's really going to be about that twist to lean into the extended leg before you can shoot the back leg behind you. This isn't going to work if your legs aren't active. The more you point out through the feet, and generally, generally speaking, the way I look at the asanas is that as soon as your feet are lifted away from the earth, they must stay active to maintain this total body awareness and strength. So demoing this movement, this time with the right leg moving back as the left leg is driving force. Come into your wide leg forward fold. Then sit your hips back into your titibasana. Look up, squeeze your inner thighs towards your arms, point out through the feet, float your feet, puff up through the back of the heart, lean, lean, lean to the left, twist to the left until that right leg shoots back. Keep gazing forward, energizing through the feet. Don't cheat by letting that right leg rest on your right tricep. Triceps are free from that back leg. And then slowly come out of it. This is a really fun transition to play around with, and it's a lot more available if you can understand how to twist your body and leaning over into the shoulder to allow the back leg to move back freely. 
If you have any questions, please go ahead and leave them in the comment box below. There are so many great arm balances out there, and I hope that you find a way to incorporate this one in your practice. But always remember, if it doesn't happen, don't worry. It's going to happen one day at a time and with patience. Also, please rest your wrists. And a nice way to release your wrists from all of that extension that we do into the wrist extensors is to hang from a bar and just dead, um, dead hang. So that's a really nice way to release your wrists and to release your shoulders from all of that energy expended on these arm balancing techniques. One of the key aspects of all arm balances is the technique. It's less about strength and more about how you can stabilize your shoulders and how you can puff up through the back of your heart, protracting through the shoulders. Like for example, if I go into crow pose, my shoulders are puffed up. If I go into Ekapada Bakasana, my shoulders are puffed up. And that's really going to help support your arm balances throughout your journey. It's all about technique, less about strength, less about flexibility. Focus on your technique. And for more arm balance transitions and for arm balancing tutorials, please go ahead and hit the link below that will contain all of my tutorials for finding your flight path. Thank you so much. I hope that this tutorial has helped you. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to support the page. Thank you for practicing with me and have fun flying in your practice.